Hello, and welcome to Focus on Design with Hunter Industries. The Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, has developed a robust labeling program uh, to guide consumers in making better purchasing decisions when it comes to products that consume water. You're probably familiar with the EPA WaterSense labeling program. In fact, we at Hunter Industries have several WaterSense labeled products when it comes to controllers and spray sprinkler bodies. The EPA has now expanded on the success of this program with, in launching version two of their WaterSense labeled homes program. Here to share more about the program today, Olga Cano. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. And thank you to Hunter Industries for uh, allowing this space for us to talk more about saving water. So yes, how the idea started. Uh, back in 2006, a group of stakeholders from all over the country were encouraged or encouraged EPA uh, to develop something that would be a national voluntary market-based program that would promote water efficient products essentially. So um, what we wanted to do is have a sister program to what Energy Star is today. Uh, so Energy Star focuses on um, electric uh, appliances. We like to focus, or we do focus on water sense labeled products, which are uh, plumbing products that use water. So right from the beginning of the program, the idea of offering this whole house certification was alive, uh, but it only started with products. It wasn't until 2009 that we implemented our actual water sense labeled homes program. Yeah, I know that, I mean, the industry really has adopted the the water sense labeled products uh, symbol and, and, and they really look for those kind of things. So you're saying that the, the home certification program started in 2009. Can you kind of elaborate a little bit more on the history of that? Absolutely, yeah. We can take a deep dive into uh, what the HOMES program, uh, how it came about. So again, in 2006, we started with products. In 2009, we launched our WaterSense labeled HOMES program. Uh, the idea was that this would be a building science approach to water efficiency. So we already had products. We wanted to find a way in making the whole house efficient, not just at the end use. And so with version one, we put out uh, what we referred to as a prescriptive checklist uh, certification, which listed essentially uh, various requirements uh, needed for a house to achieve certification. Uh, just to name a few, we had water sense label products as a mandatory requirement, as well as hot water distribution. And we also looked at the outdoors, looking at irrigation uh, system installation, as well as landscape landscaping typology. Now uh, in 2019, 2020, sort of at the beginning of the pandemic, we actually launched our version two program, which allowed for much more flexibility, both indoors and outdoors. Um, this version, this newer version of the program uh, allowed for a minimal uh, mandatory checklist, uh, and then also a 30% efficiency requirement. We also uh, made a big shift as to how the certification structure works. So we moved from having one program administrator, which was ResNet, to now having home certification organizations, so in plural, where we had various organizations participate in the certification process of homes. That's great. Okay, yeah, thanks for expanding on that. Um, you know, we at Hunter and our stakeholders are pretty concerned about water. So can you elaborate a little bit more about water? and its relation to the program? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so again, as I alluded to, um, the program has two main components. So we look at water use indoors and we look at water use outdoors. Uh, we know that the national average, uh, the ratio of water use from indoor to outdoor is about 70% use indoor uh, versus a 30% use of outdoor water use. However, this ratio can change depending on where in the country you are. So if, for instance, you're in the Northeast in a colder, wetter climate, most of your water is gonna be used indoors, right? You're not gonna need a lot of water for irrigation. However, if you're living in a region like Arizona, uh, somewhere Southwest, you're gonna see that your water demand outdoors is much greater. And so uh, for version two, we really wanted to add that flexibility, that regional flexibility, where builders can pick and choose what strategies they wanted to incorporate into their homes so that they could be as efficient as possible, depending on where in the country they are. Um, the regional flexibility really focuses on the outdoors, given the um, given the a big impact it has in some of the more arid regions. So um, originally under version two, the landscaping was a prescriptive landscape approach where we would require that the landscaping be designed and installed by a certified irrigation professional. 
Um, we also had a requirement for minimum mulching and site preparation. Uh, there was also a requirement to limit the use of fixed spray. And uh, there was a requirement to include specific irrigation controller technology um, and later Watterson's labeled controllers. There was also the requirement of using the water budget tool. And so while we still maintain these as best management practice, they are no longer mandatory requirements to achieve 30% threshold. So let's talk about that a little bit more too, because we see this movement from these prescriptive measures to more of the system-based approach that you're talking about and, and performance-based landscapes. Can you expand on, on that a little bit more too? Yeah, definitely. The, the landscape uh, or the outdoor portion of the home is always a little bit more complex, right? Um, it's, uh, it's an area where a user uh, behavior is, uh, has a much bigger impact. And so what we want is for Watterson's labeled homes to be sort of a guide uh, for builders or for their trade partners um, and our certification partners to make that the right decisions for a specific type of landscape. At the same time, however, we want homeowners and potential buyers to know that uh, when they see that the water sense label is on a home, that it's been designed and it's been intentional to save water and to perform, right, as a, as a whole package, both indoor and outdoors. So we felt that a performance-based standard was the right approach to offer in this case. Um, while also adding the flexibility. Uh, also, one thing to know is that landscapes could be like appliances as they consume resources uh, for some added benefit. However, they're different in that they really require a system approach since the usage profiles across the country can be so much more different. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that the complexity of landscapes requires additional management to ensure that water conservation is both um, being intentional and that it's being efficient. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes uh, efficient irrigation products do not always translate into actual efficient management of irrigation water use. So it's really important that we set the homeowner up for success, um, so to speak. And uh, as we mentioned, the exact requirements will vary based on the house, uh, depending on the lot size, the footprint size, the climate, et cetera. There are various uh, variables which all come into play. Uh, there'll also be some variation depending on which HCO, uh, which, uh, which home certification organization you use uh, in version two, since they maintain their own measuring tools uh, for measuring water efficiency. So specifically to the performance rating usage. Uh, so if you have a larger landscape, if, you ha if you're in a, hot, uh, in a hotter climate, et cetera. Uh, so we will need to do much more to meet these requirements if you're under those conditions. Uh, homes where we expect lower outdoor use, such as in the Northeast, uh, or where you have a smaller landscape or you're in a cooler climate, may have much more flexibility. Uh, as part of that, I'd like to share uh, part of our website where you can come and find more information about our own uh, home certification organizations and some of the tools. So if you navigate to the WaterSense website, um, you'll find a home section, and under that is the home certification. Under this page, you'll find much more information about all of our HCOs, um, home verifiers, and a lot of more resources guiding you through our checklist um, and guiding you through all of the requirements that you have. I, I got to tell you, I am I'm really excited about this movement to this performance-based landscape. I mean, we are talking about ecosystem services, giving back to communities, landscapes that are actually producing positive impacts and benefits for not only the homeowner but for the communities uh, this is great and I, i'm really really thrilled to see epa take this approach for this kind of certification um, you mentioned you know efficient products and not um, not being used efficiently to in, in landscape and, and i'm glad there's recognition there that you know there needs to be education to the end users and stuff like that because that's something we come across all the time so thank yeah i think this is a great great program so so who are you targeting i mean like who who do you want to to um be trying to get the certification yeah so our our stakeholder range is really broad i would say so we really focus with on builders obviously because they're at the front lines you know getting these homes up and building designing and building them and so uh, builders are able to partner with our program and obviously we work with them through through all of the phases however we have other stakeholder groups such as municipalities 
uh, utilities. Uh, we also have a very close relationship with Raiders now. Um, and ultimately the home buyers, right? We try to uh, have products and resources and tools that educate folks on water use. Uh, we also um, try to use the program to leverage incentives uh, in uh, localities. Um, and we've also seen our program be adopted as part of drought mitigation plans. And so it's great to see this sort of broad implementation of the program across the board. Yeah, that actually, that's pretty exciting too, to get that kind of adoption. So. So you've been around since 2009 with this program. Where do you see homes being certified? Yeah, the, the program, um, and again, now under version two, because we have this uh, broader flexibility working with various home certification organizations, the program can be implemented nationwide, right? Um, however, we do see the, the uh, program being adopted mostly in the arid regions. So there's a lot of water since legal homes and places like Arizona, um, uh, Vegas, California, you know, so the Southwest is, is really uh, coming up. Uh, however, we see it also being picked up in places like uh, Denver uh, and just maybe the, the more progressive states, if you'd like to, to say that. Uh, but yeah, again, it, it could be uh, implemented anywhere across the, the nation. Um, and it does have some overlap with other certification, green certification programs. So it sounds like there's a lot of growth happening. Do you, what are your goals with the program? Uh, I think ultimately we would like, you know, for every new home that's built throughout the country to be water sense certified, right? Um, this would be uh, a, a label that would assure people that their homes are performing well, that they're saving water um, so that we can continue to conserve our, our natural resources and mitigate our drought and uh, sort of mitigate um, some of the uh, scarcity that we're starting to witness. Um, I think in, in speaking about program work, uh, program growth, uh, we would like to see our homes, you know, um, certifying homes on a yearly basis, maybe like in the in the ten thousands uh, of numbers. Um, and we do see more adoption as as builders are moving more into um, high performing performance builders and uh, green green building. So um, I don't know. I think sky's the limit. I think ultimately, you know, if uh, if municipalities are adopting the program sort of as part of their code and it sort of becomes standard, I think that really would be uh, would be the 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 end to all. Yeah. Now you've asked you answered this question throughout our conversation here so far, but really the why is always the thing that I'm interested in too. So why would an organization or an individual really be interested in achieving a, a water sense labeled home certifica certification? Yeah, my answer to that is always why not, right? Like we all we all need water. We all appreciate water. We know that it's essential to, to life and, you know, in general, but yes, I think when it when it comes down to um, the numbers and when it comes down to to making business sense, um, it makes bus a perfect business sense, right? Uh, if we are more efficient with our water, we're again protecting our, our natural resources. Um, we're also able to decrease our operating cost. Uh, if you're talking, you know, about a utility, if you're talking about infrastructure cost, um, you're also decreasing the cost for the home buyer. Uh, or the renter uh, through their through minimizing their cost at, at their utility bills, and uh, it just sets an example for for a sustainable um, community that uh, is is being careful. Uh, I'd also like to mention that uh, the program has shown to be very viable for builders that are trying to get uh, land rights or water rights, you know, for for new developments, and so. If you can prove that your development is not going to have, um, you know, the standard impact of uh, of water use, if you can show that you can minimize that, that's also a great incentive for for local um, municipalities. Those are all really good reasons that answer that why question, and and I, I like the I like this the 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 first one is why not, <laughs> you know, I think I think the program sets a really great exam example and a standard by which to conduct business by. So that's great. So I. I mean, how can people learn more about the program? How can how can they get a hold of you? Yeah. So um, again, this is uh, Water Sense is an EPA uh, uh, program, uh, which means that we are a public voluntary program that is uh, free to the public. So uh, anyone is able to reach out to us, contact us. Um, we're here to help. In the, you know, through programmatic uh, support, technical support. 
Um, and so I believe we'll be sharing uh, the information. You could always email us at watersense at epa.gov. Um, we also have a 1-800 number that um, folks can reach us out. You can reach me personally at uh, cano.olga uh, at epa.gov. Uh, yeah, and we're always just happy to talk about water, help you save water, and just uh, continue to push the envelope. Thank you so much for sharing today. And and uh, I, again, we think it's a wonderful program, and it 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 sets a wonderful example of for for us for us to to better manage our our water in our communities and in our homes specifically. So it's. You know, I, I urge everyone here today to reach out to EPA uh, for additional information and uh, and consider you to, to not only consider EPA water sense certified products for your projects, but also in the cert the home certification labeling as well. Uh, again, thank you for joining us in this conversation as we focus on design with Hunter Industries. Awesome, thank you all. Bye bye.